Okay, so we are back for episode 4 of our franchise mode with the Calgary Flames here in NHL 18. Uh, so we finished off in the last video at the end of the month of November. Uh, it was a much better month for us than the month of October, October was. It was a pretty bad start to the 2017-18 uh, NHL season for the Calgary Flames, but we have picked it up and we have jumped to third in the Pacific but we are in a log jam there. You can see with the Ducks, the Oilers, three points back of the Golden Knights. So a bit of a log jam there in the middle of the Pacific Division, but it is a weak central division this year. So the Pacific is probably going to claim both wild card spots. So we want to hammer through a couple months here of simulating. So we're going to get straight to that. There's nothing really to go here. We'll go off the same lines. We're on a uh, two game uh, win streak here against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who is the top team in the East, I believe. And the, let's take a look at that quick, I just, just quick, I just want to look at the, because uh, we only looked at the West in the last video. Uh, I want to look at the East just to see, just out of curiosity. Uh, so yeah, and it's the Toronto Maple Leafs with 40 points. So uh, they had a pretty good record. They are dominating Lightning, Sabres, Panthers, Canadians, and uh, the Jackets round up the top six. Um, so just a quick look there. Washington way down here. That's kind of interesting. Uh, at 13, the Hurricanes, no surprise down there. Bruins, no surprise. Uh, and the Islanders. But just a quick look there at the uh, Eastern Conference and why we're at it. We'll just quickly show you the West again. Again, this is surprising because Arizona and Vegas were expected to probably be the two worst teams in the entire Western Conference, maybe in the entire NHL, and they are somehow dominating. So I do not know how this is happening, um, but they are somehow. Minnesota, the only team in the Central that's above us and then we're there in that log jam uh chicago's down there colorado near the bottom and los angeles the la kings and the winnipeg jets are at the bottom of the western conference we expected and look at nashville didn't expect nashville to be down there uh, chicago's pretty low as well but uh we probably expected colorado and vancouver to be down there but uh, interesting interesting we're only two months into the season so uh we will start simulating now uh we are 15 10 and 0 on the season through two months as mentioned now uh, as mentioned in the last couple of videos i am uh, on a pretty horrible microphone here it is a zoom recorder it's the only microphone i had on every episode i'm playing with the uh, volume levels trying to get this to a they're like the first two episodes were like really high pitch i think it improved in the third episode and hopefully this one but um yeah i'm just trying to play with the volume levels playing with the settings on the zoom recorder it's a pretty crappy uh, microphone and it was like uh, it was a pretty expensive microphone like 300 bucks for this damn zoom recorder hardly even used it and it's not doing it's it's plugged into the usb of the playstation so um you know maybe that has an effect on it but who knows it's a try to i'll try to fix this audio the best i c can um it's hard to even edit it like you can't find a pitch controller i can raise the volume i can lower the volume but i can't really find a way to uh, fix the pitch especially in those first couple videos so that's why uh they were the way they were so let's get to the simulating here so we have simmed up to december 2nd the first game of december and we've got the 14 10 and two edmonton oilers we are welcoming welcoming them for the second meeting of the season in the battle of alberta so let's get straight to the simulating we're just rolling with the same lines rolling with mike smith uh like i said mike smith in the last video uh, it mentioned he had a extremely good month in November compared to October. So uh, let's do the first period here against the Flames and Oilers. Nothing second period. We're out shooting them pretty bad here. Uh, they got the shots back in the second and the third period. And we win one to nothing over the Edmonton Oilers. So finally, after uh, we dropped our season opener to them and we dropped uh, all the meetings last season against them, we finally beat the Edmonton Oilers after like a year and a bit but uh it's not too big of a concern considering we beat the edmonton oilers like the last 10 years before that for 10 years straight so mark jankowski scores the lone goal this hockey game that is big uh we like to see that uh Stajan didn't play much there but just a quick look there at your ice time leaders and mike smith again having another solid solid game in fact he gets the shutout with a 28 save uh performance there from mike smith so it's really good to see Smith turn the corner here uh, after that bad start to the season. I really thought that we might um, we might have to look at different options when it came to goaltending, but uh, clearly that is not the case. It looks like we will play the season with Mike Smith. So, uh, I also mentioned in the, at the end of the last video, this menu is just incredibly slow right now. I do not know why, um, but it's, it's taking forever. So, 
Let's sim up to the uh, game against the Flyers. They're 13, 12, and 1 on the season, so about in middle of the pack for them, average season. Um, for the Flyers, yeah. Are we are we up to? No. Okay. I click simulate up to this game. There we go. Okay. So uh, Backlund's still leading us in points. There. We're gonna just continue with our simulation here. We got a small road trip to Eastern Canada coming up. Toronto, Montreal, back to back nights. Uh, we could give Eddie Lack a game, but I'm not not thinking we will because Mike Smith is just playing really well right now. So two goals quickly there by the Flyers in the first period on seven shots. Not what we like to see. Uh, Yori Laterra and Matt Reed getting in on it. Let's get the second period, Calgary, and we let in two more. So just when we were bolstering, bolstering about Mike Smith, um, he lets in four goals on 16 shots. So that is really not good. Uh, through two periods, Claude Giroux and Scott Lautner on the board. Third period, come on, Calgary, score four goals. Uh, we get one. Michael Backlund. Um, okay, so not the best game there. They do funnel 34 shots on Smith. He had a much better third period, but the first two were pretty, pretty bad by uh, the Flames netminder. Um, just looking here. A few players in the minuses. Sam Bennett's line. Uh, looking at our leaders here, and Mike Smith in 8-4-6, so pretty, pretty poor performance from Smith in this one, but that's okay, because he's he's consistently been putting together uh, pretty good games for us, so we will, we want him in the net for Toronto, because he, we he was in the net for uh, our last meeting with the Leafs, that was just like a couple of games uh, before this, in Calgary, got us the win, so we're going to put him, or leave him in the net, I should say, against the Eastern Conference leading Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, 19-7-2 on the season. They were having a fantastic season in Toronto. Um, but maybe against Montreal, we should put Eddie Lack in. But we also do have Lack's former team, the Vancouver Canucks, coming up on the 9th there. So we could um, put him in for that one too. Okay, incoming trade offer. Our first ever trade offer of the season. Our first message that has really popped up about anything. Uh, the New York Islanders are interested in Brett Pollock and our fourth for their fourth. Um, not really seeing what they're seeing in this trade. I'm just going to edit trade here just to show us. Um, yeah, we don't need this. Continue, continue. Yeah, I know this. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's not really like I, I don't understand a fourth for a fourth, okay? What's Pollock like that? That does not benefit us in any way to give you a player for free. Now, we took Pollock out and did a fourth for a fourth. Even then, though, I mean, our... Mm, I don't know. I, I, We don't need to do this trade. We didn't need to do it even if it was a fourth for a fourth. That doesn't do anything um, for us. And uh, why would we give you Brett Pollock for free? So, kind of confusing why uh, while, um, or why Garth Snow would propose that trade, I should say. But um, he did for some reason, so... Uh, we will. We only scored one game. One game. One goal last game against the Flyers, but we will keep the same lines and uh, just see what we can do against the powerhouse Eastern Conference Toronto Maple Leafs here. Um, goals. Okay. So Smith is still in net. First period, Calgary, and it's Dominic Moore beating Smith. Okay. We really need some goals here. Twelve shots on net. We gotta get something going here. Second period against the Leafs. There we go. Troy Brower, Dougie Hamilton get us on the board and in front third period for the Calgary Flames and the win. Come on. Yes. That's what I like to see. Yermir Yager and Matt Stajan, the former Toronto Maple Leaf, beating his former team for maybe the last time ever. I mentioned in uh, the um, first video that we're not going to re-sign Stajan, but I don't think he would retire anyway in this game. Um, so, whatever. Um... What was I going to say here? Just look here quickly. Bennett's line. Okay, so second straight game that Sam Bennett's line has been a minus two. Because I believe we got Janko, Ferlin, and Bennett on the third line with Yager uh, playing on the top line with Monty and Gaudreau. Uh, so we are going to split up that third line because that's two straight games that they um, are minus two in both games. Um, just quickly look at our leaders here. Oh, Backlin only playing 438. So that's not good. He got injured in this hockey game. Uh, no way he plays 430 and doesn't get injured. So we are hoping and again praying that that's not a long-term injury for Michael Backlund because he's currently leading us in points. Um, 
Okay, Monaghan leading us there in ice time and did not get a point, so don't like to see that. Wow, they put Eddie Lack in, so that's also concerning because I have turned the auto goalie rotation off and I've turned the uh, assistant coach editing lines off, so the only uh, reason that they would have pulled Smith is from a bad performance, but a 9-1-7 save percentage through 23 minutes of ice time is not bad. So that's really alarming because that must mean the only other uh, explanation is that Mike Smith got injured in this hockey game and they had to bring in Eddie Lack to finish off the hockey game. And he makes a uh, 9-5-2 save percentage uh, on 21 shots in 36 minutes. So pretty good performance by Lack and Smith as they both split the game. Um, for the most part, especially against the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. The problem here is that Mike Smith got injured, as did Michael Backlund, probably our two biggest players at the moment on this hockey team. We cannot afford to lose them. <laughs> Let's pray right now that we do not lose Mike Smith or Mac Michael Backlund for a uh, considerable amount of time. Oh, I just, we can't, especially Smith, we just can't. Uh, and we do, we have lost Smith. December 20th. Wow. Wow. So we have lost our best player all season on this hockey team uh, for the majority of the month of uh, December. So, wow, that really throws a wrench into... Wow. <laughs> Michael Backlund also injured. Um, oh, that's just not fun. That's not fun. And we remember we turned down injuries to... Uh, 15 out of 100 if I'm not mistaken in the last video. So we have options here. Um, you know what? Parsons, we got to put we got to put Gillies back in net in the AHL because we had Parsons play the month of November. So it's Gillies' turn for the month of December. Remember, Gillies and Parsons were going to completely share the ice time in the AHL between the two. Riddich and Schneider are not playing for us at all. So I'm wondering if we leave... They're all on two-way contracts, so it really doesn't matter. If we leave Parsons and Gillies down there, because, I mean, we could bring Parsons up because he's only backing up all month to Gillies, but then he's just going to be backing up to um, the Flames to Eddie Lack, and that's not going to do us, you know, that's not going to do him any good. And we don't have the player morales turned on in this game, so it's not going to boost his goddamn morale if he gets called up to the NHL. So I'm thinking we just call David Redditch. Just put him in the backup spot. He's not even. We're not. He's not going to play a game. We're going to give Eddie like all the games here because I. Well, unless he has a pretty bad game. And Redditch is a 69, which is better than Parsons anyway. So if he had to play a game, so we'll put we'll put Redditch in the NHL. Um, go to edit lines here. Yeah, editing lines. Oh, so Michael Backlund does get injured, but stays in the hockey game. While we're at the screen, we will uh, fix this here. So we're going to put a uh, Jankowski back down here and put Versteeg back up with this Bennett line and see if that can help that third line that's been struggling the last couple games. Uh, goalies, we will give... Okay, so Eddie Lack is a 79 as well. Oh, no, okay. Rich is a 69. For some reason, I thought they were the same. Okay, yeah, so we'll give Lack pretty much all the games unless he has a, like a 7 nothing blowout. Then we'll put maybe Rich in, but... For the most part, let's just give Lack the games here. He played really good there in the second half of that Toronto game. And again, that's against the best team in the Eastern Conference, probably the best team in the NHL at the moment. So uh, we'll give Lack the uh, ice time and the games. We have lost our best player, Mike Smith, but that's okay. Uh, it's December 7th. He's out till the 20th. Um, but we want to hammer through some simulating here. So let's just keep rolling, rolling with these games here. 15, 12, and 2 are the Montreal Canadiens, as we are in the Bell Center. And we're simming up to that game when this menu loads. Okay. I really, I, we, we need to see more offense. Just looking there at Michael Backlund, uh, 20 points in 28 games as our leader. We have to see better off. Like, we need guys to be close to point a game. Um, so we really need the Gaudrills, the Monahans, especially to step up. I say it every time, but it needs to happen. Okay, first period at the Bell Center, and there it is, Johnny Gaudrill. It's like you say his name, and he scores. So I'm going to say his name every single time now. Kachuk also beating Carey Price 2-0 after one. Come on, second period. Sean Monahan as well. He scores. 
Um, Andrew Shaw getting in on the fun as well. Breaking Eddie Lack shot out and the third period. Boom. That's what we need to see. And there's Sam Bennett. He's been very quiet, as mentioned, this season. Gets in on it. But, oh, that's kind of concerning that Thomas Blakanix and uh, Andres Martinson uh, both uh, get in on the scoring and almost, uh, make it a one-goal game and almost tie the thing up for the Montreal Canadiens. So, kind of concerning that we blew that. We had, like, what, a 4-1 lead or something, and we blew that there, but or a 3-1 lead. We end up winning the game, that's the main thing, who cares. And the biggest thing, Monaghan and Gaudreau finally get a goal here. Bennett gets a goal, so that's pretty big. I skipped the stats there, but that's okay. Uh, that was a good game for us. Monaghan now jumping into the points lead with 21. But again, look at his goals there. Four goals in 29 games. Like you, we need better over Sean Monaghan. He is a pure goal scorer. I mean, he is our guy that's supposed to be penciled down for 30 goals a season. Uh, he's definitely not on pace for 30 goals right now, um, you know, in the month of December. Like he, that, whew, That's going to be an extreme career low. But if he can keep the points going, maybe he can at least be one of our, you know, can he push for a 50-point season? I don't know. I, he should be a 60 to a 70-point guy. Same with Johnny. But, I mean, it's just not, our offense is not looking good this year. Um, and you know what? That come trade deadline, that might be... Um, that might be something we focus on is bringing in, like, we were looking at the um, trading block. Maybe we don't bring in defense. Definitely don't need to bring in goaltending, uh, barring any other injuries, and we pray we don't get any more. But maybe we got to start bringing in actual offense and maybe an actual right winger for the top line. Uh, so Michael Froelich early in this game, one nothing beating the Canucks. After the first, it is 2-1. Edler and Del Zotto scoring for the Canucks. Second period. And we have jumped back in front with Yeramir Yager and Matthew Kachuk. Third period. Come on, Calgary. Let's get some wins going. And it is a win. 3-2. to two. So we'll take it. Uh, they put 45 shots on net. So Eddie Lack, a really good game. Defense disappears once again. Uh, but Eddie Lack, pretty solid in this one. Facing 45 shots. So Backlund's line in the minuses. But it's okay because we win the game. I'm um, just looking there. Okay. So Monaghan and Gaudreau do each get a point too as well. So yeah, 956 save percentage on 45 shots against Freddie Lack. So I love this. He is he has stepped up and become a uh, pretty sturdy backup goaltender when we need him. Um, you know that's what we saw out of Chad Johnson last season uh, when Brian Elliott was playing. Um, Chad Johnson was a solid solid backup goalie for this team. You could you could trust him when you put him in the in the net if you had to uh, when Elliot wasn't ready to go or if he got injured or something. And that's what we, um, during this offseason, a lot of people in Calgary thought, well, you're not going to get that with Eddie Lack because he's not that great of a goalie, which he isn't. Uh, and if, so if anything ever happened to Smith, you'd be in, you know, you'd, you'd be fucked pretty much. But in this game, he has, um, uh, he's been good for us so far. Okay, Boyd Gordon for a seventh in 2018. So this, this one making a little bit more sense for us. Um, this would be a completely an AHL trade. And um, Boyd Gordon, who is a left winger. Yeah, 74. Uh, he is, he's, he's listed as a fourth line forward. Um, I don't think we're going to do this trade just because we don't need to add to our fourth line in the NHL and we don't need to really add to Stockton because we took a look at them and they're doing pretty good with out um any more support like if this was a waiver claim i would take it because we wouldn't lose anything but with the new the new the new draft uh like with the new way you draft in this game and picking up guys late like what happens if this 2018 seventh very unlikely by the way but what happens if it does turn out to be you know even a, an nhl quality player in the future um so i just i don't want to do this uh, realistically i don't think they would do that either uh, again, with the way that Stockton is sitting right now and our fourth line, we don't need to add a fourth line guy. We need to add like a top right winger right now, and we're not going to get that for a seventh. So, uh, okay, let's go to Minnesota, who is, again, the best team in the Central, 16, 10, and 3, or at least was the best team in the Central. Uh, and we're 19, 11, and oh, let, a, let us simulate this game. So, Backlund's jumped back into the front of our points lead. And what the hell happened to the menu? What is going on? 
There was no way that, okay. Um, okay, give me a second. I'm going to figure out what the hell happened. Okay, so apparently it just froze or something. I, I don't know. There is this fucking weird. Okay, Yager beats Dubnik, the Calgary native, to make it one nothing. And after the first, uh, Yager scores again, as does Charlie Coyle. But we remain 2-1 after one, second period for the Calgary Flames. Michael Froelich gets in. Uh, anytime we can get any of our guys scoring, this is huge for us. Uh, third period, and we get two more goals, the captain and Steger. But again, they they almost make it a close game as Miko Koivu, the captain of the Minnesota Wild, uh, gets two there and pulls within two. Um, so we, we really want to make sure we're protecting those leads as well when we get them. But uh, coming back to the scoring, anytime anybody scores right now at this point, is, is, is a bonus for us. Um, a plus four game from Michael Froelich. That line, really good. Uh, Backlund Yager in the pluses as well. Gio Hamilton uh, as a pairing, doing good. So good for that line. We just want the top line to get going. So uh, 909 save percentage, not bad. Freddie Lack, pretty solid game, facing 33 shots. Again, it was those last two goals by Miko Koivu in the third that, um, you know, really made this a close one. But we get the win. So we're starting to string wins together here. We're starting to, to get back near the top of the Pacific Division, uh, where we want to be, but now we just got to stay up here consistently. So uh, we're still in third. Um, you know, we kind of separated ourselves from that log jam a little bit. Three points ahead of the Golden Knights, who now occupy the first wild card spot, and um, we're up on the Oilers and the Sharks uh, that are down there as well. Uh, just looking at the top there, it's the Canucks, or the Canucks, the Ducks and the Coyotes, one point ahead of us. That's it. They're both tied for one point ahead of us for first in the Pacific Division. So we got San Jose, a divisional opponent coming up here. Um, if we beat them and the Ducks and Coyotes, depending on their schedule, if they lose, we're going to jump into first in the Pacific. So I like to see that. I it just, it, it's really scoring by committee, I guess. But I mean, if we're getting the job done. So that's all we can ask for right now. But again, just looking at that 24 points in 31 games, I just want to see more of our top players. Uh, so San Jose, we're not going to touch our lines again here. They're 13, 10, and 6 on the season. You can see them sitting there 6th in the Pacific. Wasn't expected to be a big year for San Jose. I mean, I thought they would personally still be up near the, the top of the Pacific, even though they lost Patrick Marlowe. I thought they would still be up there, but for some reason they're just not. So uh, they do get two goals there from Vlasic and Pawlowski for league scores in back-to-back -back games beating the former Hitman goalie after two periods. It is now 3-2 Sharks, Thornton, and Ferland. So come on, Calgary. All we need is a goal to tie this one up. Let's at least get a point over. This is a divisional game. We can't let these games go. Come on, Flames. Third period. Yes! There it is. Matt Stajan and Mark Jankowski, the fourth line, chipping in two goals to propel us ahead of the San Jose Sharks. We get the win. They don't get any points. That is what we need in divisional games. Like, that's what we need. So, uh, good for Brody and Hamannick. They have a good game after Gio and Hamilton have a good game. But again, it's that top line. It's that Sean Monaghan. One point, plus one. Like, we'll take it. Gaudreau. Like, why is Gaudreau only getting... Like, what, what's the ice time here? Okay, so Gaudreau led us in fours, and he's not... He's not contributing. So, like, we, we need to see more out of Johnny. Uh, eight, nine, seven save percentage. Yeah, it's okay for Eddie Lack. But again, um, you know, he's getting the wins. That's all that matters at this point is the W's. And again, just holding the fort until Mike Smith gets back for Eddie Locke. So um, you got to like what you're seeing out of Eddie Locke. I mean, again, I know this is just a video game, but like if this is real life, I mean, wow, you have to like what you're seeing out of Eddie Locke. Okay, so the Nashville Predators come to town here. Uh, we're halfway through December. Um, and it should almost be, actually, we got... We got the Predators, the Canucks, and then I don't know how many more games we have before Christmas. Um, but let's sim up to this game here. But we are on a winning streak. I don't know even how many, at least three games what was before. I can't even remember what was before the Canucks. But uh, we're starting to string together some wins, so that's good. Um, okay. Simulate up to this day. I already clicked that. Uh, so we did get the two points, but again, uh, so did the Ducks and Coyotes. They're 43 points or 42 points. All right, keeping the lines together, keeping lock and net. Oh, we do got the Blues coming up. That might be the last game before Christmas. Okay, this menu is loading. It's very slow today, but we're getting there. Okay, first period in Calgary. And Roman Yosi, the newest captain of the Nashville Predators, 
beats Eddie Lack, making it one nothing. They put 14 shots on us there in the first, not liking that. Second period here, nothing, nothing. Um, we need we need something here in the third, Calgary. Come on, We've got to at least get something here. They we just got to tie the game up. Come on, Calgary. Third period, ha. Huh. Okay, so we get that goal, but they get three back. So uh, not what we like to see there. 35 shots faced for Eddie Lack. Um, I don't know. It's do we give Riddich a game before the Christmas break? I mean, third line to minus two. I wonder if we should change up that third line. Um, okay, hang on here. Mm, Nine one two save percentage for Lack. Not too too bad. Um, actually, you know what? Smith was supposed to be back by the twentieth. That's the game. That's St. Louis. So you know what? We won't give Rich a game. For some reason, I was thinking Smith was out till the end of December. Uh, he should be back uh, by after this Vancouver game, technically speaking. So, uh, I want to sim up to this. Okay, come on. Come on. This menu. I love the layout, but I just hate how slow it is. Okay. So, let's simulate up to this game. Come on. Sim up to it. So, 14, 14, and 5 on the season for the Canucks. They're about 500. Uh, okay, Mike Smith's ready to come back now, so that's good. Uh, so we did lose the game. Eddie Lack was really good for us uh, in the few games there that Smith missed. What am I doing here, goalies? But uh, we're happy to welcome Mike Smith back. So, um, you know, and he's still on the, uh, he still has that little injury sign beside him, which means he's more prone to, uh, to getting injured again or getting re-injured. Um, so we're going to put Riddich back to the AHL. Thank you, David Riddich, for coming up and doing absolutely nothing and going back to the AHL and now doing absolutely nothing for us. So, uh, well, I talked about that in the last video. Riddich and um, uh, Nick Schneider, like, we got to decide when we're going to trade these guys. We are going to trade them. They're, they're not going to do anything for us for the next, like, at least three seasons in the AHL and NHL. Uh, we've got four goalies, Smith, Lack, and Parsons and Gillies that are going to get all this ice time. So it's, um, I'm thinking here, leaving Lack in and letting Smith's injury kind of just get better and hopefully be less prone. So let's try that. Let's try that for a game because it is Vancouver coming up. So we could put Lack in for that game. So um, here's Buffalo again, trying to do a trade. Fourth and a fourth, a fifth for Pouliot. Um, or they would give us Pouliot, they would take our fifth and our fourth. We would gain their fourth. Uh, you know, I I don't mind the fourth the fourth. I don't know if I want to lose a fifth for Pouliot. Again, with these picks being so valuable now. Um, again, Pouliot, yeah, the 77, I mean, he's he's a fourth line forward. We, we just don't need these type of guys right now. Again, and, you know, I don't want to bring these guys just to Stockton just because. Um, I don't want to give up the fifth. It's too valuable right now. So we're going to... Uh, hang on to the fifth round pick. Uh, we don't have a first either, so we've only got two through seven, I believe, uh, for our draft picks. So, um, yeah, so you know what? We will leave Eddie Lack in the net for this Vancouver game. Give Mike Smith the St. Louis game. Um, let his injuries just... Oh, okay. Yeah, let his, uh, let his injuries just get better there. Um, okay, so Bennett, Furland... And for Steve, I'm, for some reason, this third line continues to struggle. But so does this top line. yager has been better as of late. He's, I've seen he's gotten a lot of goals, but so has Michael Froelich. I wonder if we switch, put Kachuk back here, put Yager here. I was thinking of maybe putting Froelich up there. But you know what? Let's try putting Yager back there. He's been really good lately. Has 10 goals for us on the season. But it's like the, been like the last month span that he's really picked it up. Let's put him back with Monty and Johnny. Put Chucky back on the 3M line. We'll reunite that line. And then, um, you know, can't do much down here. I mean, I don't know. I'll try Troy Brower there. I it just, I don't know. It's just, uh, you know, we need we need help down here in the depth options. Um, you know, technically we need help up here too. But, um, well, I don't know. We just, we can't sell the farm either just to, to push for the playoffs this year. You know, we're still a young team. We still want to be careful. Careful. Um, okay, so let's play this Vancouver game here. Or simulate it. Keeping Andy Lack in net against his former team. Mike Smith is back on the bench, though. 
First three. Bennett scores, but so do three Canucks, second period. Five Canucks, third period, anything? Yeah, no, okay. So pretty bad game there, all around. Anytime you lose five to one to a 500 team. Um, not good. Okay, so GL Hamilton, uh, very bad night for them. Backlund's line, just as we reunite them, not a good night for them as well. And Eddie Lack, a pretty poor performance. 815 save percentage on 27 shots. So, uh, good news. Mike Smith is coming back in the net. We probably should have put him in for this Vancouver game, but I just wanted to uh, risk him getting re injured right away. Um, don't know if one game's going to make the difference, but you never know. But that's okay. And Eddie Lack was good for us, you know. Realistically, it was fair to give him the, the game. You know, he played good for us, but. That's a loss. Uh, that's back-to-back -back losses. In fact, uh, you know, in two games we only score a goal or two goals uh, in two games, um, but we let in nine. So that's uh, that's a bit concerning. So what we will do? Oh, we got Montreal coming up before Christmas too. Okay, I thought the St. Louis game was the last game. So um, yeah, we'll put Furlan back there. Try for Leak and Yager switching places. Uh, goalies. Let's get Mike Smith the net back. Okay. So, St. Louis Cowboys. Okay. Simulate up to this day. So, through this all, we continuously remain third in the Pacific Division. So, we just want to, we want to get back up there. With, see Anaheim and Arizona at 45 points there. We want to, uh, we want to be with them. We don't want to be with Vegas and... Edmonton, who are now each at 39 points, so they're not far behind, and 47 for Anaheim and Arizona now, so we really, we gotta, we gotta continue to jump up with those top teams, uh, so we need a win here, back-to-back -back losses, we have, like, we can't go on a losing streak here, we have to get a win here, come on, Calgary, please, okay, so we got Backlund and Johnny getting goals, but so does Vladimir and Magnus for the St. Louis Blues, so second period, Calgary Flames, come on, and Kyle Brodziak, the former Edmonton Oiler, gets on the board. We just need a strong third period, Flames. Please. Yes, and we get it. Yes, okay. Tarasenko scores again, but Geo, Backlund, Jankowski twice getting the job done for the Calgary Flames. So very, very strong third period there by the Flames, and we propel ourselves to a 6-4 to four win over the St. Louis Blues. Um, that's good. Backlund's line better, so that quick switch of Yager for Elite looking to make the difference. Yager on that top line, two assists. Gaudreau a two-point night, so I'd like to see that. Hamilton and Jankowski with two points as well. I, where's Sean Monaghan? Like, nothing in 21. Like, these guys have to be our top players every night consistently. Mike Smith, 8-6-2. First game back from injury, not too, too bad. Uh, wish it was obviously a slightly better performance but um you know what we'll we'll go with it so uh december not as good of a month as november for goaltending but um you know still getting the job done for the most part in the goaltending department and we did not have mike smith for the majority of the month um but offense the biggest concern here uh, continues to be i know we just scored six goals uh in a game but it's it has not been consistent at all and uh in this league to win you need consistent offense so Simulate up to this game. Montreal and Calgary. In Calgary, uh, we welcome the 17, 14, and 3 Montreal Canadiens to the Dome. It's usually a pretty wild game. So, as always, I gotta click on this simulate up to this day twice. I don't know what's wrong with this menu simulation, but it takes you two times to click just to sim up to the game, and then another time to click to sim the game. So I believe this is the final, well, it is the final game before the Christmas break. One of the final games before the end of the new year. And then we want to see if we can get January into this uh, episode as well. So uh, first period against the Canadians, nothing. Second period against the Canadians, Pacioretty and Kachuk get on the board. Third period, come on, Flames. And it is a tie game. So Monaghan and Gallagher finally. Monaghan scores and Gallagher as well. So I'm going to get overtime going here. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we're back here. 
Michael Backlund's line in overtime gets out there and does get the game winner. The two-on-one with Gio doesn't work, but then Giordano gets the puck back to Michael Froelich here, and he hammers it top shelf past Carey Price. So we get the two points over the Montreal Canadiens. That's what we need. Uh, let's just quickly take a look here at the stats. So, um, you know, we give the Habs a point, but again, it's an Eastern Conference team, so at this point in the season, does not matter. Um, yeah, okay, so... Pretty good game all around. Pretty solid game all around there. Looking at our gold tending 909 for Mike Smith. So we will take it. Last game before the Christmas break, and it's a good way uh, for Flames fans to celebrate Christmas with a overtime win, 3 to 2, over the Montreal Canadiens. Okay, so let's everybody enjoy their Christmas holiday, and let's move on. Let's move on to the end of December. I kind of really want to get January in this month, but this video is going pretty long as is, so uh, we'll have to see here. God, I just really want to hammer through the month of January and get some simulating done here. Um, okay, so we got San Jose coming up. That's, yeah, end of December. Okay, sim up to this game. I wonder if I go on the advanced day there under the quick link options. Maybe that will make this menu go faster. Let's try that. Advanced day. Okay, we are back. So it took about three minutes to simulate from this Montreal game here when that menu just froze there. It took about three minutes to simulate all the way up to the San Jose game, but uh, I had to I had to go out and fix uh, or let the menu load, and then uh, I came back in and I just simmed the final two games of the month of November, which or December, sorry, which are uh, oh no, we got one more game. We got the Hawks on New Year's Eve. So I, I finished the last two games anyway of the week. They were two Pacific Division rivals, and we won both of them in regulation, both on the road. So that was a great, uh, great finish to the month of November. We'll see if we can finish it off with a win versus the Chicago Blackhawks on New Year's Eve. So, um, yeah, so the menu froze, but we got it fixed. It's okay. Uh, so we're on a four-game winning streak. Pretty Pretty solid month of November, or December, I keep thinking it's November, December anyway, um, but we'll, let's, let's do this last game against the Hawks, and then we'll probably end the video because it's gone on pretty long, but, um, yeah, you, I mean, can't be, can't be too, uh, upset with, uh, the way we're sitting right now in the standings, we're back in third in the Pacific with those two, or those last three wins there in, in a row, so, um, that is good, 50 points, we're only one point back of both the Coyotes and the Ducks, but let's just, uh, let's finish this month off and finish this episode off, and then we can start over fresh in episode 5. So, let's get the Hawks, who are 19, 15, and 3 on the season, and it's New Year's Eve, and here goes the menu again, it is frozen again, and there we go, okay, simulate. So we'll try this here. Last game of the 2017 calendar until it switches over to 2018 and like i said uh in um earlier in this episode once we get past january especially at the end we're gonna have a better better idea of where we sit uh come trade deadline so let's finish this um month off so here's the first period against the hawks and we get two on the board johnny and sam getting on the board for us the hawks get one back second period nothing and the final period of 2017 and it's Johnny Gaudreau. There we go. That's what we need to see. Two goal performance by Johnny. Sam Bennett chips in with a goal. And we beat the Hawks on New Year's Eve 3-1. to one. So big game there. We are now on a uh, four. Was it four or five games now uh, on a winning streak to end off the, uh, the new year? I'm um, just taking a look quickly here. Uh, two point night for TJ Brody and Johnny Gaudreau and Dougie Hamilton. Uh, so offense, which has been, uh, an issue for us to start this season, starting to pick up in our last few games here. I don't know who scored in that, uh, San Jose and Anaheim game because I just simulated the calendar, but, uh, we're starting to pick up here, uh, with our offense. Just quick look here at Mike Smith, 952 save percentage, a good way to finish off the new year as well for Smitty. So there it is. There is the month of December. There is the first, uh, almost the first half of the season, if you will, um, we uh, we should sit. Well, we now sit second. There we go. So we now sit second. But let's uh, let's do this. Let's sim right up to. Uh, oh, you know what? We're on New Year's Eve, so this is a pretty good rep representation of where we sit. So 
Second in the Pacific Division, 52 points, only one point back of the Pacific leading Anaheim Ducks. So let's, uh, we'll take a look here quickly at this before we end this episode and the player stats, and then we'll start fresh in January. And uh, we'll get through February as well. So 26, 13, and 0 on the season. Uh, not bad. It was a, uh, uh, obviously, it was a uh, bit of a shaky month with the injury to Mike Smith. Uh, Eddie Lack did a good job uh, coming in and playing the majority of the games in that month, but uh, the month of December. But uh, Smitty came back and he's been good. Our offense has seemed to pick it up the last three, four, or five games or so. So that is good as well. So again, here we are second in the Pacific Division. Uh, there's the Arizona Coyotes one point back. There is the Anaheim Ducks one point ahead. So Vegas holds the uh, one wild card spot here. Uh, we'll just quickly go over to the Western Conference. And uh, yes, there we are second in the West. Uh, so it is, it, as mentioned, it's a week uh, central. Uh, Chicago's up there. Minnesota holds a wild card spot as well. Just a quick look there at the West. It's LA still sitting at the bottom with Colorado and San Jose, who uh, I thought would have had a better season. Uh, in the east, it is the Toronto Maple Leafs, still atop with 59 points. Just a quick look here. Buffalo and Philly with the wild card spots as it sits. Islanders, Red Wings, Hurricanes, and the Capitals all at the bottom of the Eastern Conference. And, then, and the NHL standings here, um, Tampa Bay and Toronto on top uh, by no surprise. Tampa Bay there, Anaheim. And there we are, fourth in the entire National Hockey League. So not bad. Again, the Central's week, it looks like the... Uh, the uh, Metropolitan is weak as well because um, they don't really have anybody up here. Their first team up here is Pittsburgh. So a couple weak divisions. We sit in a strong division, but we are second in that division with 52 points. So I'm liking this. A big turnaround from the start of the season. It was a horrible month of October. November, we picked it up. December, uh, we, we found a way to keep winning hockey games, and that's all that matters. So goals four, we still sit. Uh, oh, no, we're near the top. We're about... What is that? One, two, three, four, five, sixth in the league. So we're starting to pick it up. I mean, it's it's really scoring by committee, and I think this this is a lot in the last couple of weeks, at least the last half of the month of December. Uh, we would have probably been a lot lower if you uh, checked this uh, about halfway through the month. So we really picked it up the last several games or so on the offense goals against. Uh, we are about middle of the pack, one hundred three. So yeah, we're we're the right there. So. Um, Middle of the pack. Uh, we could improve that. Uh, Smith has been good um, since coming back, so we'll see if that improves. Power play, we sit, uh, should be near the top. Uh, there we are, about top half anyway, with a 20.4% on the power play. And just a quick look at the penalty kill that's operating at 79%. And uh, we are still in the bottom half. It was a really horrible start, but we've switched up our penalty kill. And we are no, that the top there is the bottom, uh, and we are no longer at the bottom of the penalty kill. So that is good. Uh, let's just quickly look here before we end this episode uh, at the player's um, stats here. As mentioned, it's, it's really scoring by committee, but we've got a couple guys already hitting the 30-point plateau uh, about halfway through the season. Uh, so they could be on pace uh, for about 60 point seasons, which isn't too bad. We just we want to see them closer to the 70 and 80 point uh, plateau. And again, of course, I'm talking about Johnny Gaudreau, Sean Monaghan, even guys like Dougie Hamilton. I mean, this is the year that Dougie really becomes that solidified uh, young up and coming defenseman. But there's Michael Backlund, 31 points. Uh, getting it done there on the second line. Johnny Gaudreau has really improved uh, since coming back from that injury. Uh, and like I said, this last month has really, like, those guys have really ste stepped it up. But uh, 12 goals, uh, 30 points there. Still a minus three, though. Uh, TJ Brody, 30 points, quietly having a good season. Uh, Dougie Hamilton as well, 30 points. Uh, Sean Monaghan, 27 points, so he's three points back of hitting the 30-point plateau. Uh, we'd like to see, uh, obviously, a lot more offense out of Sean Monaghan especially in the goals department. Uh, I still can't believe he only has six on the season. Uh, 12 goals for Michael Froelich. That's quietly a pretty uh, pretty good start for him. Matthew Kachuk has maybe been uh, one of the best surprises. 14 goals. Uh, he leads the team in that department uh, and 22 points. So that 3M line really getting it done for Lee Kachuk and, of course, Backlund, who's leading us in scoring. Yermir Yager has improved since a, a bad start to the season. 11 uh, goals there, 21 points. And then you can see here Steer 20, Bennett 14. So not the season uh, yet that Bennett's wanted. 
uh, Giordano, um, 12 points, but a minus 5 rating. So, uh, And there's Mark Jankowski, who uh, is playing fourth. We've given him some third-line minutes, but mostly fourth-line minutes. Um, you know, I'd like to see him improve, of course, in the second half, especially that minus 3. But definitely in the point plateau as well. Uh, and uh, Mike Smith, we'll just quickly look at uh, his stats through uh, the first half of the season pretty much again and it's yeah 912 save percentage for both him and lack smith has played 31 games lack uh 12 and there's the goals against there as well so uh things are starting to turn around for us it was a slow start to the season it was a bad start to the season um you know we've we faced some adversity in the injuries to both johnny gaudreau but most importantly importantly uh, mike smith who uh, faced a significant amount of time uh there in the month of december but uh, that's what it is, and uh, we are slowly climbing back to the top of the NHL, or we are at the top of the NHL, but we'd like to keep this consistent in the second half of the season. So, episode 5, we're going to get through uh, January, February, we're going to get as close as we can to trade deadline, and then uh, it's going to be uh, crunch time, because uh, once we get a good rep representation of where we sit in the uh, uh, standings closer to the playoff race, uh, we should be able to have a good idea of what we're going to do come uh, trade deadline, what pieces we're going to pro like I can tell you we'll probably be acquiring a piece, we won't be the sell sellers, we will be the buyers, so uh, we'll have to pick that up at trade deadline and see what we can get. So we'll end this episode here and we'll pick up the new year in the month, or in, the, in January, we'll pick up the new year in episode 5.